This is the Microsoft Surface 10 Pro, featuring the all-new Intel Core Ultra series of processors. In terms of look and design, it's almost identical to its predecessor, the Surface Pro 9. However, it offers several hardware upgrades, including a new processor, an improved screen, an enhanced webcam, a redesign to the keyboard that now includes a co-pilot key for launching Microsoft's AI-powered chatbot. The Surface 10 Pro is available in various configurations. You can choose between the Core Ultra 5 and the Core Ultra 7 for processors. RAM options include 8, 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of DDR5. And for storage, you can select from 256, 512, or one terabyte of SSD storage with an easy to access tool-free expansion slot. Microsoft claims the battery can last up to 19 hours with typical use, though this varies depending on how the device is being used. For instance, if you maximize the brightness and play a YouTube video on repeat, the battery will last around four hours. In my experience, which involved reading, writing emails, watching some YouTube, and browsing, the device easily lasted a full day with me. One of the main highlights of the Surface is its form factor and versatility as both a tablet and a laptop. Although it weighs 880 grams, making it possible to hold with one hand, it's not particularly comfortable to do so. The adjustable built-in stand is fantastic for positioning the device at various angles thanks to the sturdy hinge that retains its position while still being easy to adjust. The 13-inch touchscreen is also impressive. While I would have preferred an OLED display, it features an IPS panel with a 3 to 2 aspect ratio and a resolution of 2880 by 1920, delivering a super sharp 267 pixels per inch. The refresh rate remains at 120 Hz like the previous model, but the brightness now reaches up to 600 nits, which is a huge improvement for daytime usage. Although it lacks HDR support, the overall image quality and colors are still excellent, thanks to the factory calibration. The device includes two cameras, a front-facing Full HD sensor for video calls and a 1440p QHD ultrawide camera at the rear. While I wouldn't use these cameras for capturing special moments, they're great for scanning documents or sharing quick photos for communication purposes. The front camera supports facial recognition for sign-in with Windows Hello, and it includes AI-powered features such as automatic framing to keep you centered in the frame, eye contact to adjust your gaze towards the camera, and background effects to blur or replace your surroundings. For connectivity, the Surface 10 Pro offers two USB Type-C ports on the left side, a charging port on the right side, a power button and volume controls on the top, and a unique port on the bottom for connecting the keyboard. And on that note, I happen to have a Surface Line keyboard and pen, which are compatible with the Surface 10. The main difference between this and the newest generation keyboard would be the inclusion of the AI button, which I talked about previously. However, you're not missing out on it as you'll still find the AI Copilot located on the bottom right corner of the screen. It offers a wide range of functionality. It can generate images similarly to those of Midjourney AI by describing the image you want and refining it with the prompts. It can also assist with tasks like writing emails, essays, or gathering information off the web. Having this AI built into the device rather than relying on a third-party app or website is a significant advantage and a key focus for Microsoft in this age of AI. So the version I have with me today is equipped with the Core Ultra 5, which features 12 cores, 2 performance, and 10 efficiency. When comparing performance to the previous generation Surface 9, which used a 12th gen Core i5, we see a whopping 23% increase in performance, a significant leap for Intel CPUs. Surprisingly, the Core Ultra 7 shows performance nearly identical to the Ultra 5. I'm not entirely sure how accurate this specific comparison is, so I recommend you take a more in-depth look at it if you wish to upgrade to the i7 CPU. But either way, I don't think you'll need more performance for typical tasks this device is designed for. I expect most users to use it for office-type work, like reading and writing emails, working on documents, and browsing some media. You can even handle some light work applications on it, like Photoshop and Illustrator. But if you plan to do that, I recommend opting for at least 16 GB of RAM or higher. And this is my overall look at the Surface 10. What do you think? Is it worth the upgrade over the Surface 9? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for future content.